You know, you're going to be thinking about things like, is this the right time? Am I worthy? I'm thinking about what Wayne's world was it? We're not worthy. We're not worthy. You know, so a lot of that though has to do with if we're talking to someone superior to us, we have this issue of worthiness and it really gets in our way. Am I safe? Will the person accept what I'm, what I'm about to say? We have the assertive rights to say things like, I don't understand. I'm not sure. It's okay to say that. A lot of times we're very defensive. We don't want to admit that we don't know or that we need somebody to, to give us more information. So we just kind of go, well, I think I caught half of the message, so I guess that's good enough. I think I'll just move with that. Uh, the perception. You know, how, how do I feel about the message I'm sending it? How do I feel about whether it'll be received properly or not? And then feelings about the receiver. This has a lot to do with it. Remember how we said our cave dwellers are over here, our negative folks, and our angels are over here? How we feel about these people affects how we deliver messages to them. With the person who's on the dark side, we tend to be much more mean in how we do it. We're demeaning. We use more sarcasm. Um, we just don't treat them well. And then we wonder why they don't do what we want them to do. If we treated them more even-handedly, then we'd find that they were probably a little bit more receptive. When you get an email from someone and you start to interpret what an idiot they are, what a jerk they're being or something, you're reading way too much into it. I mean, some of those behaviors may be true, but remember that most of the bad behavior that people exhibit is not reflective of who they are at their core. It is reflective of their defensiveness. So if you allow most of that stuff to kind of flow by you instead of getting all hung up about it, you're going to be a much better communicator. You're going to realize that just because so-and-so is so abrupt and pointed and negative really has nothing to do with me. It really has nothing to do with the organization. It has everything to do with them. And instead of allowing it to bother me, I'm simply going to accept it. Now, as a sender, you want to be aware of those thoughts and be able to say things at the heart level. I found that people are quite receptive when you say, you know what, I'm not sure. I don't know. You know, sometimes we say, well, people want to know what the answer is. They want to have a decisiveness. Sometimes people need to know that you're struggling with the situation. You know what? I'm not sure. What do you mean you're not sure? I'm not sure. Could go this way, could go that way. I'm not sure at this point. So be aware of things. Be aware of your essence of your message. The other thing you'll see is it says, be concise. Verbal diarrhea doesn't usually work for us. Now, as a receiver, you have a whole bunch of issues at, at play as well. As a receiver, how do you feel about it? How do you feel about the sender? And so what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're using good listening skills, which is going to be our next conversation. Remember we talked earlier when we said that if someone comes to my office and I'm working on the computer and I kind of do one of these, what message am I sending? Busy. I'm busy. I don't have time for this. Make it quick. And you're kind of, you like to waste my time anyway, so I'm just going to give you this body language message that says, buzz off. <laughs> the problem, of course, is the other person does read into that, right? They see it and they go, oh, uh, well, I don't know, I guess, they, they, so they shorten their message, they might cut off some information that would be helpful for me to know. So what I'd be better to do is to push away and just say, hey, what's up? How can I help you? If we give people that access, they're going to be inclined to go on that journey with us and give us the information that we're looking for. Which of the key listening skills are the ones that you need to focus on? Do you need to suspend judgment? Do you need to commit yourself more to listening instead of trying to figure out what you're going to say next? Can you avoid distractions? Can you wait before responding or do you always think about what you're going to say next? See, all those are defensive things when you're trying to dominate the conversation. Can you paraphrase in your own words, reflect mentally on what they're trying to say, then be ready to respond after that? Can you ask questions, take notes, and use empathy? Just think to yourself, which one or two listening skills would make you a better and more effective communicator?